Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Uh, in this series, you all are getting to meet our fantastic faculty here at Pitt State, and today we are so excited to introduce you to Dr. Julia Spresser. She is one of the professors with our physical education program. Uh, welcome. Thanks for taking the time to and come and talk to us, us today. Yeah, yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Well, I'm from Manhattan, Kansas, so <laughs> definitely a wildcat. Uh, my uh, dad was a professor at K-State, so I grew up at Manhattan High School okay. and went to K-State. Yeah. And it's a pretty fun town to grow up in. And what was your dad's field? He was in agronomy. Okay. So he was department chair for, there for a little while, so I was around the college and uh, around college people, so I enjoyed going to visit him and seeing him. He was a good, good teacher, so... Yeah, K State has a really, really good ag program. Um, they, they have a they're one of the few vet schools in this part of the country too. They're awesome vet school too. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned you got your bachelor's at Kansas State. What was your bachelor's in? Well, I did physical education, and it was pretty cool. I was lucky because I was the last person to go through in their teacher ed program. Okay. So they pretty much shut it down after I went through. And I don't think they've reopened it since. Oh, I wow. feel grateful that I was able to get through. And, and, and given your your dad's background in agriculture, w what did your mom do? My mom was a stay-at-home mom, and uh, we had I had four sisters, so I had five girls at home. So oh, wow. We were lucky. Um, she basically <laughs> catered to us and taught us to read and um, taught us to really enjoy school and she sewed and she taught music mm -hmm. and so I played music and the violin as a youngster and so she kind of taught us to appreciate learning. So why the phys ed degree for your bachelor's then and what 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 launched your trajectory? Well I always we always got out and played in the yard and there was a lot more like free play mm -hmm. And I found that I was good at physical things, even though I was pretty small. So in middle school, it was pretty cool because this is dating me, but <laughs> Title IX came through. And in middle school, they opened a gymnastics program. Oh, wow. And so we had a really neat teacher. And so after school, I went to gymnastics. I hadn't really done much gymnastics. And so it just kind of launched my career. Once I enjoyed the team life, then I got into tennis and I got into um, track mm -hmm. and I was never tall enough to really play basketball or anything yeah. like that and um, really contribute to that type of team but I love doing gymnastics and um, I don't know I have a picture of myself on my stomach with my head back and my toes touching my head <laughs> so I was pretty flexible yeah so round of back handspring back tuck back layout so we did. We also had a gymnastics team in high school, yeah, which is kind of unusual for high school. Absolutely. So, and I taught once I graduated from high school. I went and taught at Kansas State in their community education program. Okay. And um, I ended up coming back to K State later, and was involved in that too. Wow. So Northwest Missouri State, where I did my masters, mm -hmm. I did that community gymnastics programs, and so then I went to University of Arkansas. And I worked in their um, activities program, and I taught racquetball. I was also a pretty good racquetball player. Oh, very cool. Kind of switching over from my tennis in high school. So. Yeah, excellent, excellent. And your degree at Arkansas in EDD? Yes. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so tell us tell us a little bit about that experience at Arkansas and, and kind of how that shaped your journey to Pitt State. Well, I had a really neat um, professor, and she was very hands-on with her graduate students, so I attribute her interest and her care with getting through in a good amount of time. And she was in charge of the activities program, so she set up all the lectures. I actually ended up being, uh, instead of a graduate assistant, I was a lecturer. And so I was actually on the bottom rung of being a faculty member. Mm -hmm. So I went to all the faculty meetings, things like that. And I taught classes, so I got my feet wet teaching college classes yeah. with an, you know, an easy sport, a sport I enjoyed. And um, she kind of mentored us. We actually had a curriculum, and so she taught us that that was important. And so when I went on 
to teach, I realized that curriculums were important and being organized was important. And also, of course, racquetball was fun, bringing fun to your activity classes and your classes because then people enjoy participating. Absolutely, absolutely. So after your time at Arkansas, was there a gap between Arkansas and Pitt State or did you come right to Pitt State? What, 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 was, what did that look like? I actually, um, through Shape America, which was then called AFERD, I did some interviewing and Pitt State was one of my interviews with Dr. Bryant, who was our former president here. And so um, my husband was going into the high patrol and so I got transferred here through that interview, and then he transferred um, here. So we ended up in the same place. So it was very opportune. Perfect. And so if you have the opportunity, if you're a young professional, professional to interview at the national convention, it was super good for me, and I assume it would be super smart for you. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that national conference and you know maybe some ways that students could get involved with that? Yes. Um, here, if you belong to Hyper Club, then we try to get our students to go to the KFERD conventions, which are our state conventions, and then we also try to get them to go to Shape America. And so we'll carpool, and we'll, a lot of times our department will get a men's room and a woman's um, hotel room so that kids can throw their sleeping bag on the floor, and it, it costs students a lot less to go. But it's a really great way, way to network mm -hmm. and to get your, see those professionals out there and you can take their ideas and mimic them and become a better professional, but also, you know, go for those interviews, et cetera. So, yeah. and sometimes so. students here will get on programs with professors like you and I, mm -hmm. and so then they can put that on a resume and they can distinguish themselves. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I think that's I think that's great advice for any, any students out there looking to further their career. It's, it's critical to build those connections so you got to Pitt State about the phys ed program what's what's your kind of wheelhouse within it we see and, and we'll talk about the classes that you teach and uh, both at the undergrad and graduate level uh, but what's your area of expertise we, we we've talked to several of the other faculty members and it seems like everyone kind of has their niche so what's yours well I really enjoy my theories three class Fund theories and Fundamentals of Activities 3. And it's an unusual class because it has only three things that we work on, and that's gymnastics, aerobics, and then weight training. And so I have taught aerobics, step aerobics, Zumba. Um, I teach Pilates at Pinamontes currently. Um, I teach Zumba here on campus. And then, of course, I love gymnastics. Mm -hmm. So I feel like um, teaching that activity class is really in my wheelhouse. I yeah. am a generalist, so all my other classes, I feel like um, I had a good background in them, but I feel like the activities classes is my favorite. Um, I really love um, when we go out to the schools mm -hmm. because I, one of my course, as you can tell, my passions is gymnastics. And so I feel like every athlete should start in gymnastics. And one of the reasons is because you be begin teaching kids how to fall. Mm -hmm. And so every sport, you're going to at some point need to fall. And so if you know that from a really young age, you know how to do it, you know where you are in space, that, and you know how to tuck and roll and protect your head, then you will be a lot better athlete. So I think gymnastics isn't that big in public schools anymore because mm -hmm. of the liability. Right. But I think every elementary school physical education teacher should really just teach the basics yeah, so that kids can know how to fall. And I think I think what you're saying makes a lot of sense given the, the rise in soft tissue injuries that we see associated with, with turf and things like that. So, exactly. so if we learn those skills how to fall, like you're saying from a young age, maybe we can avoid some of those uh, potentially athletic career ending injuries. Yes, exactly. So that's, that's really good advice. Um, so with your classes being activity-based, how would you describe kind of your teaching style? What's, what's your, what might students be able to expect from a class with you? Well, when we're teaching activities, we try to get kids to kind of look at the introduction, the explanation, the demonstration, so that you're giving the best explanation with cool cues, short and pithy, right? So mm -hmm. they, you know, hand, hand, foot, foot, you know, you can clap it out. And then um, 
Then, if you give that perfect demo, they know what to shoot for. And then have that practice where you try to balance, at least in gymnastics, you try to balance the activity with the safety. Mm -hmm. So in a public school setting, you'd actually have to ha maybe have a mat on this side of the gym and a generalized game with general supervision over here. Mm -hmm. So you can give that specific supervision over here, but have your general game running over here, and then you rotate them in and out. Yeah. So we try to get them set up so that they could teach gymnastics, as well as they get opportunities to make their own aerobics routine mm -hmm. and teach that. But if you teach kids how to teach an aerobic routine, then they get their students right. then to apply that. And then all they, all they need is a couple uh, routines to model and then they can really set it up where their kids are the leaders and it's mm -hmm. pretty much the same with gymnastics somewhat and weight training where you run them through the how to do it and give them a great demonstration and some good cues and then as they're practicing they give them some really sp specific feedback mm -hmm. um, with maybe just one cor one major correction in there yeah and set them up for success yeah that sounds that sounds really you know strategic and well planned out on your part because it sounds like you're very intentional with what you have your students doing um, can you walk us through you know you mentioned you go to some of the local elementary schools and things like that and, and have your students uh, kind of coach the K through 12 kids uh, through either gymnastics exercises or whatever else. Can you walk us through what a day like that or, or within that program looks like? Uh, I, I think that's a really interesting learning opportunity for our students. My kids really wanted to go back and teach gymnastics again. We haven't been able to because of COVID, so we were so excited to get back into the schools. So Megan Mantooth, who is a former graduate, and Veronica Osmus, who's a former graduate, um, teach at the elementary schools here or have in the past and so they allow us to come in and we pretty much come in during our class period mm -hmm. and we will teach them forward rolls, backward rolls, headstands, handstands, cartwheels, round off some really basic skills and we have small mats and so we have it set up so we have a teacher at each mat teaching those activities and then spotting them so they can do it safely and learn how to do it. Usually we'll go a couple times with gymnastics and then this next week we're going to go with aerobics um, at the elementary school. We also try to go to the high school and do a HIIT workout and that's actually pretty fun because each one does a station and so we have high in intensity interval training and we usually do that about 20 minutes. We try not to wear them out too bad. <laughs> and then a lot of times we'll play a game after that. So we have um, each pair of students is in charge of, of a game. Mm -hmm. And so um, we plan it, have our posters. And so it's actually really fun to get out there and get our feet wet by actually teaching, you know, here at the here in, in the in town at the high school yeah, and at the elementary school yeah in the community making making connections and, and getting students those experiential opportunities to you know do what they're going to be doing after graduation right leading leading students through um, those kinds of uh, educational processes so if there's one thing you hope your students get out of your classes I know it's probably hard to boil it down but what would that one thing be I think it's so important to go from, a lot of us are athletes, and to go from being the athlete to being the mentor, the teacher, and the coach. And really physical education is very different than coaching because you want each child who probably has a very different skill level um, to have success. So if you look at Shape America's new um, language, they really want our kids to be physically literate and I really love that because each child is going to come to you with different skills, but each one is just as important as the, as the other student. It's almost like the kids that are already in your sports programs, they're probably already going to be successful. Mm -hmm. So you need to focus on those kids that maybe not, not as good at physical skills, but you want them to find something that they love so that when they graduate, they'll keep being physically active and are American children just need that so much. They need a passion about something so that they will stay physically active their entire life. Yeah, part of that part of that health and wellness part that it, it seems like everybody in our department advocates for so much. 
So outside of the SRC, outside of um, teaching, going to the elementary schools and things like that, what are your other interests, hobbies, and passions in life? <laughs> well, as you can tell, I really like physical activity. So I teach Pilates at Pinamonte's Wellness Center at 6.30 a.m., so you can come join me if you want to. <laughs> it's pretty early, but we really love it. And I kind of draw from all my experiences, so it's kind of like Pilates fusion. And of course I teach Zumba, which I've really done for a long time, and really love that still. It's fun and the music's very world world music with Latin thrown in there a lot. So I really enjoy that. I love photography. Um, I have three dogs and so I take them out on the four-wheeler almost every day. Aww. And we have a pond, so we throw sticks. <laughs> and I have some grandkids, so I go to see them. I have two more on the way. I'm pretty excited. Exciting. That's yeah. awesome. Congratulations. So, so we're doubling up. We're going to go from two to four. Wow. So pretty exciting. Going to have your hands full. That's great. Congrats. I, it's, it's, I'm pretty thrilled. <laughs> Hopefully we'll have some good gymnasts in the mix. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I think you've alluded to a lot of the reasons why our department and our program is, is so special already, but um, why do you think students out there, maybe they're thinking about coming to Pitt State, maybe they're thinking about um, getting a phys ed degree. Um, why should they choose Pitt State over others? Well, I love the focus on teaching and we do have uh, professors in the classroom versus GAs for the most part. And so you'll get a full professor usually, um, somebody with a doctorate degree and so I love that because they have a lot of experience and they bring a lot of experience to their classrooms. And their focus is teaching. Um, we do try to stay up with the new material and go to our national conventions, et cetera. And the other thing is I really love our collegiality as a faculty and that we really want to have our students succeed and we want you to get out of here in uh, the 120 hours, which yeah. has been changed in your four years and succeed as a physical education teacher and a coach if that's what you want to do. Awesome, awesome. And if anybody out there wants to get in contact with you, wants to learn more about the Phys Ed program, where might they be able to reach you? Well, jaspressers at pittstate.edu is one of the best ways to get to me because that'll come right to my desktop and I'll try to get back to you or send you my phone number or looking forward to hearing from you. Awesome, awesome. Dr. Spresser, thank you so much for your time today. It was a pleasure, as always, and everybody out there, we'll see you next time. <laughs>